everybody, it's the Buko Boys. We're finally back. This is Derek DVO. And I'm Dale. And the Ben Alton Brothers, a.k.a. Buko Boys. Fun, 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 fun. <laughs> Episode yeah. 40. You're number 40. Wow. It's going by fast. It would have been 41 because we missed a week. We did miss a week. Sorry, Sorry, everybody. We both had busy schedules. Yep, when you weren't busy, I was busy and vice versa. Yep, and then we had uh, our mom's birthday we planned out. Yeah, so we were busy. busy doing mom's birthday. Also, my it's funny, my mom, my mother in law, have birthdays within two days of each other. So, yeah, we were busy. <laughs> <laughs> and work's been busy. I've been slammed. I've just been slammed lately. So, anyway, we're back at your normally scheduled podcast with the Buko Boys. Well, we gave us plenty of time to watch the movies, right? We did. We did <laughs> watch some movies. Yeah, we did catch up on some movies. So we'll get into some movies that we watched. We got some uh, ghost stories that we we have. Uh, but first of all, let's talk about the latest news: Justin Bieber. Yeah, what a dweeb, right? He's calling out Tom Cruise for a celebrity <laughs> boxing match or UFC match in in Is the it mixed martial arts. Yeah, so he, he was octagon. calling him out for a, a match in the octagon. He even he even uh, tagged Dana White in it. Oh, that's right. I did see that. That's so right. Dana White could get involved with it. But and, uh, Dana White hasn't responded. Know who responded? Connor the Notorious McGregor. No, even better. Who? Danny DeVito. Wait a minute. This is news <laughs> to me. You didn't hear this? No. It was like almost instantly after. Danny, he said, what did, what did he Danny say? DeVito said, fight me first, you coward. <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love that. JB versus the Penguin. But um, <laughs> I guess... Uh, yeah, so Conor McGregor wanted to get involved. He called out Mark Wahlberg. Well, what he did is like, yeah, I'll promote. The, well, first of all, Conor responded saying, "I'll promote it. I'll promote the fight because he's got his sports entertainment company." When he fought Mayweather, he started a sports entertainment company. So he said, "I'll sponsor it, or I'll host it, maybe, if you will." And then, and then, and then later that day, he called out Mark Wahlberg. He's been, he's but I don't know if you knew this. This is not his first call out of Mark Wahlberg. No, I didn't know that. He's called out Mark Wahlberg before. Really? For wh how long ago? Months ago. Okay. You probably don't know the history of it. No. Obviously, I'm a big MMA fan, so I, I do. Connor wants his ownership, his stakes in the UFC. He's like, I've taken it to another level. I want my piece of the pie. Now, he's getting big money for his fights. He's getting million dollars for his fights now. So he wants his piece of the pie. So obviously fighters, they get paid um, MMA, or pay-per-view. They get paid on the pay-per-view. They get paid on the door tickets, you know, the en entrance. Um, I don't know what else. They also get paid in other ways, I'm sure. Uh, Reebok pays them as well. Yeah, sponsors. I think they're also sponsored. I think Reebok and Monster Energy are the big sponsors. Maybe Bud Light, too. So they get, like, a piece of things. So... But he's like, I want my ownership. I want my ownership stake. So he's called out a few people, not just Mark Wahlberg. He's also called out Sly Stallone and Conan O'Brien. <laughs> now, this is all in fun. It's not, he's not seriously like wanting to hurt these guys. Right. But he's like putting up like, hey, fight me for your stakes of the UFC. <laughs> like he wants his piece. So what, so what do all these people have? I mean, do they all hold, are shareholders or yes. something? Yeah, they all okay. have ownership. They all have minority uh, ownership in the UFC. And so he's calling him out because he wants to own some of it? Yeah. And but so Dana White's them... not giving him, or the Fertitta brothers are not giving him any shares. They're like, no, he's not giving Or is the any. shares, somebody has to sell their shares. Someone's got to sell it. And so he's calling him out because he wants to, like, wager them selling their shares to him? Or, like, I'll fight you for him. Okay. That's what he's doing. With, with Mark Wahlberg, he's like, I'll fight you for your share. I don't know what, like, what if he loses... I mean, Con so or Conan O'Brien has shares. Yeah, That's yeah, interesting. yeah. Sly Stallone, Conan O'Brien, Marco. I'm sure there's more. But those are the three that he's called out that I know of that have shares. That's Obviously, hilarious. Dana White and <laughs> oh, I'll tell you who. Um, Joe Silva. He he uh, he retired when WME bought out the UFC. He retired, but he was the matchmaker, uh, Joe Silva, and when. WME bought UFC, he decided to step away, took his cut, I guess it was a pretty significant cut, and he's just retired now. Nice. I guess they sold it for like four billion or something like that. It was big. It was big. Yeah. I've been watching the history. It's the 25th anniversary of the UFC for a while. 
they've been doing like promotions and they've been doing like a lot of the history on the UFC's YouTube channel. It's been pretty interesting <laughs> to watch. As, as a fan, it's been pretty fun to watch. But it was really fun to see uh, Conan, not Conan, uh, Connor call out Mark. And he was calling him Marky Mark. <laughs> oh, was he? <laughs> yeah. In the call, I was calling him Marky Mark. And there's no bad will behind it. He just wants his piece of the UFC. Well, just ownership. recently, Bieber just said he was just kidding. He oh, said, really? Yeah, he said he doesn't want to fight Tom Cruise. He's like, Tom Cruise would kick my ass. Well, there, I mean, stakes were, were put on the table. Um, I think, who's the underdog? I can't remember who the underdog was, but... I'm pretty sure Justin Bieber would be the underdog. Tom Cruise does his own stunts. He does, does he? Yeah, he does his fight scenes. Because he has an extra tooth or what? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because he's short. He's got to prove something. <laughs> Do you know he has an extra tooth? No. Yeah, he's got like an extra tooth in the front. Weird. And, and then Mark Wahlberg has an extra nipple. I heard about that. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Um, I thought that was funny. I thought it was funny. I don't know. I was like, where did this come from? Justin Bieber calling out Mark it came Wahlberg? out of nowhere. He just I like that. Randomly, I, think it, I thought it was to promote something. Right. Or, or, or something happened. I thought maybe Tom Cruise said something about him. Yeah. And Justin Bieber said, all right, let's, yeah, we'll put some gloves but on. Yeah, it just came out of nowhere. And Justin Bieber just threw it out there on social media. And the, everyone started sharing it and... Oh, we got we got some we got some real wind going on around it, right? I thought it was hilarious. I was, was laughing at it. I was like, "Man, you're gonna get your ass stomped on." And then he called it off because he's like, "Yeah, no way, he's gonna kick my ass." I'm not a fan of Justin Bieber, but I did think it was funny. It was funny. I did think it was pretty funny. But yeah, it's not going anywhere. Just kind of like that a whole Chris Brown and Soldier Boy thing. Oh, that yeah. one actually had momentum, and it was gonna happen. They were gonna train and everything. They had Mike Tyson was gonna train Chris Brown. And then Evander Holyfield was about to sign on to train Soldier Boy. <laughs> yeah. And then Chris Brown ended up just calling it off. Which it's, I thought Chris Brown would have took that. I don't know why he called it off. I, it, it's, it's one thing to act tough, right? It's another thing when, when, it's time, when it's time to prove it. Yeah, when it's time to square up. I'll tell you what. So, you know... My good friend, Sean Kojima, he, he stepped in the ring one time and fought here locally in Utah, and he won. But, you know, one thing he was saying was, he's like, I'm done, I'm retired. <laughs> one fight, I'm done. Because he was like, what if, and I totally get it, he was like, what if, like, I slip, and they catch me, as I'm like, I slip on some sweat or something, and I get caught, and then I'm knocked out. I look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Just the embarrassment? Yeah. So I was like, I get it. I kind of get it. Yeah. Recorded. And like, you don't want to be a viral meme of getting knocked out. Yeah, true. You get posterized. Yeah, you, then you'll end up on Tosh.0. Oh. Or someone's <laughs> highlight reel. Oh yeah. my god. The fail army. <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd be hilarious. I, I would have I liked it. Like, remember those celebrity boxing matches? Yeah. I would have liked to see something like that between JB and Tom Cruise. I wonder, if, funny. I wonder if Justin Bieber like watched uh, Leah Remini's Aftermath of Psych um, Scientology. Scientology. And it's like, you know what? F, um, F you, Tom Cruise. That's Scientology. F you, Tom Cruise. Yeah, F you, your crazy alien cult, Tom Cruise. I'm going to knock you out. Knock you and Zumu out. <laughs> Is that the name of their god? Yeah. Oh. Their alien god. <laughs> but, you know, if you're, if you're a Scientologist, that's cool. That's totally cool. I hope saying, I didn't, I hope maybe I didn't that's what Bieber said. It. Not We didn't say that. Bieber said yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would have been funny. So, I would have liked to see it. So some of the movies we watched, let's start with this one I watched. Okay. The one we had talked about, Brightburn. The Brightburn. one where the, the kid gets these superpowers. So basically like Superman, but instead of going the route of good, he goes the route of evil. That right. was the premise of the trailer. I didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty uh, pretty dark. This kid Sorry. was a straight up sociopath. <coughs> Sorry. What's the with you? It's allergy season. I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, Your dusty ass house has got me. Whew. <laughs> so, uh, this kid gets, uh, he's going through puberty. He's getting, gets a little bit bullied, but not even that much bullied. Just things aren't going his way. And being okay. a kid, getting angry about things not going your way. And then realizing he has sense. these powers. Like how old is he in the movie? Probably like 13. Okay. That makes sense. So he's realizing he has these powers and when he's getting pissed off with people, he's just like, eh, F you. <laughs> kill, he's, he's on a killing spree. Oh, really? And he's a straight up sociopath. Straight wow. up lies about it and just like, eh, eh. Interesting. Oh, I wouldn't hurt them. I love them. <laughs> Walks away. <laughs> it's like, um, huh. 
crazy. But anyways, yeah, he was, he would get mad about something. He's just killing everything, everybody. It was, it was pretty dark. It was a really dark movie, but it was like, yeah, this is the same storyline of Superman, but this kid is just not happy about things. And when he gets mad, he lets it out and he's not all there because probably his alien race, they're just, they don't have feeling or something. Okay. So he wasn't, maybe, maybe he's not a sociopath. Maybe that's just his alien self. He's no Kryptonian. No, they don't ever say like what planet he's from or anything. But he gives zero shits. Okay, interesting, interesting. So it, yeah, I would yeah I would say go watch it if you haven't you seen it already. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it it was uh, I I don't think it was a great great movie, but it was it was pretty good, and it kept my interest the whole time to see what he's gonna do next. Okay. And it was pretty dark. It, it showed some pretty some pretty gruesome stuff. Which I'm not a big fan of like the bloody gore. Okay. Like, go for the gore type of <clears throat> movies. But even though this showed some pretty nasty gore, it was good. Okay. I kind of covered my eyes a couple times. I'm like, I don't want to see this. This is I know this is gonna be gross. So I don't want to see that. <laughs> okay, good to know. But yeah, definitely worth checking out. You brought your daughter with you. Did she like it? Yeah, she liked it. Okay. She was into it. She was like, oh my god. <laughs> okay, interesting. And Next one you've seen. This I one. went and saw Godzilla. So um had had one day off. And my wife and I said, let's go to a movie. We haven't been to a movie together in a long time. So we went to go see Aladdin, which we had already seen, and she hasn't, though. Still sold out. Really? Wow. Yeah. And this was like on a Tuesday. <coughs> and then we went, we, then we decided, let's watch, I can't remember what the other option was, that was also looking sold out. So we went with Godzilla. After watching it, I realized it died <coughs> in to 2014's Kong Skull Island. Right, I knew that. So, uh, and I didn't know that, so I actually went back and a few days later watched, I think it was like that next following Sunday, I watched Kong Skull Island again. Mm -hmm. Just kind of piece it together. So, so I kind of, I see the, I see how it kind of comes together. What it, what happens is in Kong, this takes place in, in the 70s. The movie of Skull, Skull Island takes place in the 70s. Right. And they find, obviously, Skull Island, and they find King Kong and all these bigger-type creatures, mm -hmm. along with the skull crawlers, those little yeah, lizard those little lizards. Things. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, that was it. And then I guess there was a post credit scene at the end of right. Skull Island that I actually hadn't seen. Did I you watch that? that? Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and it, what it is, it's uh, Tom Holland, not Tom Holland, what's his name? Middleton? Tom Middleton? Loki? Yeah, it's Tom Hiddlestone. What is it? Hiddlestone. Hiddlestone. And Brie Larson, they, which were in the movie, they're in a, what they think is an interrogation room because they just got rescued from Skull Island. And they're sitting down, kind of like how we're sitting here, and they're talking to one of those two-way glass, right? Like, they think they're in an interrogation room. Uh, and what, who comes out are the doctors from Monarch, mm -hmm. which is the organization that is looking for these monsters. And they're like, hey, you know what? There's more. Yeah, that shows all these pictures of like Mothra. Like, yeah, like in caves, like cave drawings and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a, there's a picture of a a, a Kong like creature fighting Godzilla. It's, it's again, it's like drawings on caves. Mm -hmm. Now it wasn't King Kong because he was just a, a baby. What's that? He was just a baby. He was just a baby. You're right. So they're saying that was in the '70s. Now fast forward, we're in the 21st century. He's gonna be much bigger, fifty much stronger. years. Yeah. So he's gonna be much bigger, and then uh, in this Godzilla movie, this is the biggest Godzilla they've had. So obviously Godzilla's been around since I don't know sixties, seventies. I don't know. It's been a long time. Godzilla's been around, right? And there's been versions of him like just barely taller than buildings. Um, obviously, it's a guy in a suit, yeah, <laughs> and he's just going through Stomping, knocking down kicking, these styrofoam. cardboard, <laughs> yeah, styrofoam yeah. cardboard building-looking things. Um, this is the largest. He's like five times bigger than a building. He's huge. And uh, it's kind of cool. They tell a lot of the story. I like the way he looks. Godzilla looks awesome in this. Like he okay. really looks like a scary monster. Uh, but just like in the other Godzilla movies, he's there kind of for the people. So do 
people know about him then so he's obviously they've known about him for like 50 years yeah okay good point so there's always been like these rumors there's always been rumors of these titans they call them uh -huh. they call them titans i guess in in japanese they call them kaijus okay like and, uh, so they were rumored about and they were kept secret from the public yeah, and then in 2014... Sounds like, sounds like something they would do. Yeah. <laughs> 2014, um, Godzilla had had did something. I don't I don't remember what the story... Because it's a flashback. The movie starts off in a flashback of 2014. Um, and then fast forward five years, today, 2019, people are still... You know, we haven't heard from him. Where, is he, where did he go? He went into the water. We haven't heard from him since. What's going on? And then it shows like Monarch and Monarch. In, in, this is, I'm, t I'm telling you guys what's in the trailer. I'm not going to spoil anything. Obviously, in the trailer, you see all these different creatures like Frozen or different things like that. Uh, yes, it goes into the, all that stuff. It's If you've watched Godzilla, anything of Godzilla, you know there's other creatures like Mothra, uh, Good Gajara, the three-headed dragon. Okay, I don't um, know his name. Yeah. I'm not going to even try to attempt it. Yeah, I, I should have written down. We, got, we all remember. But are there fight scenes? Yeah, of course. It's Godzilla. <laughs> so I, I saw in the trailer, it looked like Millie Bobby Brown, like, reaching out for some tadpole. Some giant, enormous tadpole-looking thing swimming oh. around. I'm like, so is Godzilla a tadpole? No. Okay, so he's not a tadpole. No, what she was reaching for <laughs> was, was, was Mothra. And I, it might have been just coming out of the cocoon oh really so yeah. so they had these titans in monarch's facility yeah it, okay. there's monarch facilities good point there's monarch facilities all across the globe okay see so there's That's multiple now okay. and um so you know the rumor is each monarch facility has a creature that's why there's a facility there and i'm not going to spoil anything uh because i do recommend people to watch it the creatures look awesome they look really good like it's not okay it doesn't look too it doesn't look like a very poorly done cgi it's it looks really good i was i, I was liking it now however my wife edna she didn't like it she did not she's not into these type of things okay um i actually am not myself i really hated that godzilla movie in the early 2000s or late 90s with uh matthew broderick Bro yeah that was i, I hated, hated that, that one that yeah he looked like an iguana he yeah. was an iguana. He was a nuclear iguana. Yeah, he was a Galapagos Island iguana. Yeah, well, that, and that's where nuclear... Godzilla gets his powers is from nuclear energy. You know, that's how he gets his powers. So maybe but... when the Japanese nuclear plant burst, is that where he, in like that really happened? How long ago? During when the tsunami happened? Oh, um, I don't and know. the reactor got right, and right. they had to evacuate. Yeah. I that, is that how Godzilla gets his powers? Maybe there's real Godzilla out there. <laughs> they do go into where he gets his powers from. Uh, so you, do, you should watch it. Uh, it's good. Okay. Gojira, he will come after you. <laughs> okay, I want to see it. <laughs> is that good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> watch out for Gojira. Is that how they say his name? Yeah. <laughs> well, the Japanese guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm trying to remember if this was... Also correlated to another Godzilla movie that came out in 2018, I think. Uh, there's cartoons. I know there's a Netflix one. I didn't see that. I think there was a recent movie because... What's his name? Ken Watanabe? What's his name? Yeah, there was one. There was another one that came out after the Matthew Broderick one. There was another redo of, of Godzilla. I didn't know if they were going to tie that with... That Godzilla with this one. They don't not so not so much, but I think it has some of the same like like Watanabe's in it and I think he's like the same plays the same character though. I never actually watched that Godzilla. I don't know if I did either now that I'm thinking. Maybe about we it. should watch it. Because I never watched it up on purpose because I was like, F you. Now did you watch those old ones, <laughs> those old Japanese ones? I wasn't a fan of them. I wasn't either. I, I would see I that they would be on when I was a kid because they would just randomly be on sometimes. Yeah. And I'd be like, this is so corny. It was, very, it was really ridiculous. Well, not only that, just I, it was already being made fun of on other formats that I would see. Yeah. And then when I would actually watch, uh, they would actually be on TV and I'd see it and I'd just be like, that is really corny. I can't. Well, this is too corny it's to watch. Hard, you know, it was, it was because hard. it was also from like 60s, 70s and we yeah. watched them in the 80s, 90s. I'm not, so I'm not the, the biggest fan of it myself. 
I did like like some of the King Kongs, like with Jack Black. I liked that one. I thought that was good. Yeah, see, but there was never a good version of Godzilla to watch yet. Yeah. So even the revamped ones with Matt Broderick that you talked about, I hated it. I tried, I gave it a chance and hated it. So that new one that came out before, I didn't even give that one a chance. Right. I don't think I did either. But I did, I'm all about King Kong stories of, because those look kind of cool. I gave those chances and... I wasn't really let down. Yeah, I like those. I, I like I like the Skull Island. I like the one with Jack Black. And I guess now um, they are going to make another movie where Godzilla and King Kong collide. I'm sure at some point they're going to fight. So it's going to be good. Because King Kong... Origin stories. They have to do the origin stories. Yeah, it makes sense. So King Kong is the last of his kind. That's what they said on Skull Island. Right. He's the last one. Those lizard creatures ate all or killed all the other giant apes yeah he was See, just how, a baby like you said how was baby kong able to beat all those little things up and his whole family got slaughtered well he's he's he is bigger now i don't know maybe he's just smarter than them hmm he keeps him at bay <laughs> but that's too many questions that when the big when that big lizard came out the people helped kong true that maybe they the big lizard's him. the one that ate the whole family yeah i forgot about that big one at the end yeah, because because it, 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 spoiler watch, alert, watch it again, watch it again. <laughs> um, you know, John C. Riley's in that. Yeah, he's um, hilarious. He's hilarious, and he tells a lot of the background story. So it was pretty good. It was pretty good. So, so I like it. I do recommend, especially if you're a big fan of it, uh, watch it if you're looking for good action or good monster. Uh, it was good. Like I said, the creatures look really good. They look okay. really good. I'm definitely gonna give it a shot now because I wasn't really caring to. S- to go out of my way to go see it yet. I was gonna just happen to stumble on it one day, I guess. But now I'm gonna go out of my way. I'm gonna give it a try. I'll okay. tell you what not to worry about going out of your way for. Uh-oh. The Dark Phoenix. Ooh, the last X-Men movie from Fox. How horrible that was. Uh, I didn't watch it, but I didn't want to see it. You invited me, I was like, I don't know if I want to see it. Well, <laughs> this is how I roll. I paid four bucks and had VIP. Yeah. But it was bad. I thought know how bad it was? How bad was it? I passed out. You fell asleep? <laughs> I fell asleep. <laughs> and then the I, woke up, asleep? I woke up during like the last battle scene and I was like, oh, that was actually a really good scene. Okay. So I woke okay. up right in time. I think it was the loud effects of things right, happening right. that got me to open my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, the movie was, so Sophie Turner playing Phoenix, Jean Grey. Yeah. She almost had... I mean, you could probably count her lines on your hands. That's what I heard. I heard her and Michael Fassbender, who plays Magneto, also have very small lines. Yeah. And so her not really talking, it was, and you, when she did talk, it seemed like she was trying to mask her, um, her English accent so much that that's why they didn't want her talking. They, okay. Because they did some flashbacks showing her as a child. Okay. And even in those short flashbacks... She talked more as a child in those flashbacks than she did as an adult during the whole movie. And it was just kind of, it was kind of obvious that they were keeping her from talking. It was really okay. weird. Okay. Not only that, they rushed this movie. And I also heard that they were, this was supposed to have been a two-parter. So this was supposed to be a two-part movie and it kept getting delayed and delayed. And then it eventually got turned into just this one movie that got hurried right. and pushed out the door because they were merging with Disney. Well, you say it got delayed, delayed, but also got canceled, then reinstated, then delayed, then canceled. Like it was like back and forth. Yeah, it was it was so so much, and then it was funny because the timelines that we were just watching how how uh, Michael Fassbender and what's his name that plays Professor X. McAvoy. Yeah, there was an eight year difference between this Dark Phoenix and the first X Men movie, and in that eight year difference, they aged dramatically. Yeah. And then from the '60s to this point, they didn't age at all. Right. So like all of them look the same from the '60s up till now, or th- till the '90s. And that's a, that's, a, <laughs> that's, a, that's a problem when you get like different uh, directors getting involved. I think. Yeah. You know, like the creativity get kind of gets they, lost. Yep. The the. Point of storylines gets get dropped. And Continuity can, gets lost. Yes, for sure. So, I like that Disney is going to take over, and all of them are going to be together. Which is probably why the Dark Phoenix kept getting delayed and canceled. Was the mer- not the I'm merger, sure. but the buyout of Disney over Fox? I'm sure it had to do with that. And so you're probably right. They probably rushed it, like you said. But it was pretty bad. And like what we were watching <laughs> when they said Logan should have just ended 
that the that, whole X Men uh, everything should have just ended with that. I agree, because it was in the future that gave us a good fifteen years from now <laughs> to yeah. you know to to make storylines make sense. But um, it looks like now they're gonna go in another way. In there, it's looking like when they snap the fingers, when either Hulk or Iron Man, when they snapped their fingers, okay. created some type of um, parallel universe, the multiverse. It created the oh. multiverse openings. <clears throat> so now they're going to incorporate multiverses. I don't know if they're going to incorporate Fantastic Four from a different multiverse, because they are bringing Fantastic Four in. They are bringing yeah. the X-Men over. So all of that has to make sense now. Maybe Deadpool? Deadpool is the only one that's coming over from from Fox. Is the only one coming over? Yep. Oh, so, like the way as is. With yes. Ryan Reynolds. Yes. Gotcha. So he's the only one. Ryan Reynolds is the only one coming like over from Fox. they're going to continue from, from yes. where, it, where it ends, where X-Men might just start all over. Fantastic Four might start all over. Right. Okay. But they're going to incorporate Deadpool somehow. They're going to continue the Deadpool stuff. I don't know how they're going to do it with the X Men involved in it anymore. But they're going to continue his his uh, his movies. But oh, I think they're going to actually add him with uh, Spider Man. Okay, they're friends. Yep. Yeah. But I also heard that there's a there is a chance not in this next movie, but possibly in another, um, the next Spider Man movie. Uh huh. They might introduce Venom. Oh. Maybe. Okay. So not in this one, but possibly the next one, there's talks of how Venom can make sense. We still got that story of Carnage out there. Well, yeah. That, that one's going to be the next movie. Venom and Carnage are definitely going to be the next Venom movie. Because they already have a three-movie agreement. Ah. So okay. I'm excited where that's going. I haven't even heard if that one's even being filmed yet. I haven't, I haven't heard. But, um, but anyways, back to Dark Phoenix. Sucked ass. So you're saying don't watch it? I would say don't watch it. If if you're a Marvel fan, if you're an X-Men fan, I probably would just skip it entirely. Yeah, because, you know, what was that? X-Men The Last Stand, which was X-Men 3? Yeah. They did, like, the whole kind of Phoenix storyline. Yeah. And, and that's where I got confused, too. I'm like, wait, didn't they do this story well, already? They didn't do a good job with it, though. They did not do a good job with it. <clears throat> and they kind of rushed that as well. But they... Um, yeah, it just wasn't. A lot of the timelines when they were doing the the new mo different movies, a lot of things weren't making sense. Like when they did Logan, or not Logan, uh, the Wolverine origin movie. Oh yeah. Um, that one didn't, or what well, was the first one? It was the, because there were, ended up being three Wolverine movies. But what was the first one? It was Origins. Okay, so that and one, then it went to the Wolverine. Because that one that introduced Wolverine and him, who he, how he was born, and what year it was. But then his family brother, or whatever, was Sabretooth. Yeah. And, and step brother, half brother, step brother. Yeah, so it didn't make sense with the timeline with the other Sabretooth from the first X Men movie. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of things weren't making sense already with where that uh -huh. whole franchise was, was going. They, so, and then also they did the Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds in that X Men Origins. Right. That was really stupid. And yeah, that was way dumb. And that's why he wanted to bring, bring it back because he wanted to be Deadpool so bad. And he killed the X-Men Origins. <laughs> yeah, and the end of Deadpool 2 because he, he was hanging out with Cable and learned time travel. Yeah. So he's time traveling and fixing things in all the, or in all the, all the movies. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. But, um, but I am excited to see that that whole thing is gone because that was a mess. Them trying to it clean up good. that whole timeline of things because like, oh, this whole movie didn't even happen anymore because this happened. Yeah. But then, so all this time travel thing saying this deleted this, this deleted this, when, but when you watch Endgame, that whole Marvel's part of things in the MCU say that time travel, going back in time doesn't change anything. Things will still happen and won't change anything. Right. And they're like, the whole thing you learned about time travel is BS. And right. they kept referring to, oh, so, so Back to the Future was complete bullshit? <laughs> well, the whole... X Men franchise is complete bullshit. Then, well, it really is. It got really messed. Up. I think the first two movies were great, and then it just kind of went down. I, I just I can't get into it after that, honestly. Like, yeah, I love it just the first it really bounced movies. everywhere. It bounced all over the place so much, and everything was changing that it was like they're using the same characters. 
but things aren't making sense because this happened and here they are like this and then yeah their newer selves and younger selves it were make a lot of crossing sense. over but yet not much a change in looks when things yeah advance in the future so yeah it was way too confusing i'm glad it's i'm glad that's over because <laughs> i was still gonna watch them regardless and it was just gonna drive me crazy so i'm glad it's over i don't have to go through that stress and emotional nonsense yeah it's over now but yeah the first the first x-men movies were i really like the first two x-men movies i really like them i really like hugh jackman playing wolverine because he wolverine is my favorite character oh and that's one thing that this was the first x-men movie that he did not make a cameo in oh he's been in every x-men movie there was as a cameo of some sort or character but this was the first one he wasn't in because he said logan's the last one he yeah. said, that's it. Logan's it. But, uh, yeah. I, 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 liked the, I actually did like... Well, he was Wolverine. alive during this timeline. That's right. what I'm saying. He was alive during this yeah, timeline. But, but, yep, he's done. I did like X-Men Origins. I, I like the idea where they were going with that, where they were going to do the origins of each X-Men character. But they just kind of stopped at Wolverine. But I did like it. I really liked that. I movie. wish they would have kept going with that, actually, because Wolverine in the comics ends up having a son who he had, was in, in Japan with that girl. And that son ends up trying to kill him. So that, that comic, that storyline would have been really cool. Or if they just used that Wolverine to carry over into the MCU. But who knows what they're going to do now. It's going to be all sorts of crazy. Yep. <coughs> well, it won't be all sorts of crazy. It's going to be brand new. They're going to start all over. Yeah, I know. So it's all sorts of crazy, meaning it's, yeah, it's all new. It's going to be, anything can happen. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun to see. I'm curious how they're going to... If they're yeah, finally going to have Jubilee do something, if she's actually going to be a character instead of just walking by in a trench coat and <laughs> going, hi! <laughs> so maybe. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. So yeah, so those are the movies that we watched uh, in the past week. But I'm not seeing like any... Uh, I don't know, there's more blockbusters come out. I'm like, we're, we're looking at Father's Day this weekend and we're looking at right. taking our dad out to a movie. and I'm like, I'm not... Nothing's really looking good this I know. Weekend. We still have... We haven't watched Pet Cemetery because that... Kind of look like garbage. I don't really want to bad things. Same with uh, Child's Play. That looks like garbage. I'm not seeing that. Yeah, I don't really care for that either. Hopefully, some more. I, you know, summertime's usually like a big blockbuster start hitting. So hopefully soon. Right. Like, like they started off strong. Yeah, like looking. Like probably Godzilla's the is probably the one big one that's looking decent. Oh, Aladdin. Aladdin was good. So hopefully something comes out this weekend. We can go. You know see what? It. So my wife Savannah, she really hated Aladdin. She hated it. Well, she was such a fan of the cartoon, yeah. such a fan of Disney. Me too. She hated this movie with a passion. She was like, I want to punch all these actors in the face for this. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I thought it was okay. But I could see things like, you know, the way they would sing and dance at the same uh -huh. time uh, or, or act and sing. You know, some of that was kind of bad. But yeah, there was a lot of things she, she just did not like about it. Hmm. I liked it. You know what I've noticed, though, too? I wish that they would start doing, if they did the live-action versions of the movies, if they did different things with the storylines, like they did with Maleficent, like the new Maleficent that's coming out. They didn't do the Sleeping Beauty storyline. They no, just did... new movie. Yeah, but that's what they did with it. You know what I mean? They did the live-action version of that, but took it in a completely different place. Take a live-action live version of what? Sleeping Beauty. They took they, the storyline of Sleeping it's Beauty. Sleeping Beauty. It's called Maleficent. I know. God damn. Aren't you listening to what well, I yeah, said? Yeah, but you're saying take the I, live yeah, version of it. The live version of that, but made it something different. So they took Sleeping Beauty and made it Maleficent. Okay. So they made a completely different movie so out of the movie. So calling it like a genie? But, <laughs> but taking the storyline and, yeah, going somewhere different with it. Doing like okay. genie storyline of how he became a genie. Okay. And then his run in with Aladdin and stuff. So like his perspective of things would have been awesome. Making a completely different Aladdin movie and calling it Genie of the Lamp or something. Ooh, you got you're onto something. See? There. And then <laughs> and then with uh The Lion King, it's gonna come out soon. It's gonna be completely exact same Call version. Hakuna Matata. No. <laughs> Call it Pumbastic. <laughs> <laughs> but have it followed Timon and Pumbaa. Uh -huh. And then they're running with Simba. And then that whole interaction, how that happened. cartoon. I know, but that's, <laughs> it's, this would be a movie, though. Yeah. But, they uh, might. But imagine how cool they would, they would just be different. It would be the same characters as the cartoon, but a different point of view. 
Sure, yeah. I, I think that would be... Like I said, I've always wanted a Darth Vader movie. But just, where does Darth Vader go? What happened? How did he become Darth Vader? Yeah, just oh, during love, that, that empty time. I love a movie like that. Tell like, Disney. We should email Disney and say, hey, we got some creative ideas. Buko Boys Incorporated over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be... I'd, yeah. I, I, like, I really like my idea and your idea. Let's just start <laughs> pitching them. <laughs> oh, because I am excited for the new Maleficent, too. I'm excited for that. Right? One. And yeah. because it's so different than Sleeping Beauty. It's just like, it's a different. It's different. Right. It shows a whole different world that you didn't know existed. All you thought was these the fairy godmothers was it. it. No, it goes way beyond that. Yeah, there's more out there. There's a whole world of creatures. Yeah, true. But anyways... Um, other creatures. I hit those. The what? The blinds. Oh no, we're good. Okay. So I've stumbled across this show. It's it's not new. It was on Amazon Prime, but I guess it ran on Lifetime Network. Um, I don't know if it's gonna have another season yet or not, but I just watched the first season, binged it in a day. It's called Seatbelt Psychic. Yeah, you introduced me to it, and I liked it. So this dude. Oh, uh, well, do you remember his name? James. He's like two first names, one of those things. Yeah, like John like, Tyrell or something. Like no, that. James, Matt, James, or I can find it. Yeah, it's fast. one of those like two first names type things. Yeah, his and name. so what he does is we looked that up. He is a what he calls a Lyft share. So I don't know if he's doing Uber or Lyft, but ride share. He's doing a ride share, and so he's picking up people, and he just kind of you know chit chats with a little bit, a little bit, and says. Hey, so what do you guys think about mediums or psychics? Kind of, kind of ask their opinion at first, and they kind of say they believe or they don't believe. And he says, "Well, I'm a me he's a medium and a psychic. So he's a medium and a psychic, and so he he mostly uses his medium powers." Is it Thomas John or yep, yep, look right, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's like two first names. I told you, yeah, <laughs> something like that. I can't remember. Yeah, it's Thomas, like Thomas John, huh? Yeah, I think that's it. But he goes by Medium Thomas on on social media. Oh, does he? Yeah, I'll yeah. mean, follow him. But uh, but yeah, he, yeah, he. People get to get in his car and he he asks them what they think. And sometimes some people are being honest with him. They'll say, "I think it's a bunch of BS," or mm -hmm. yep. or they'll say, "Ooh, I like that." You know, one, one lady goes, "Oh, I'm a medium." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was funny because she was not a medium. No, <laughs> she was like one of those. Uh, people on the phone when you call cleo yeah probably because <laughs> he said he said okay yeah we'll we'll, uh, we'll do a little reading on each other this is what i'm reading on you are you getting your reading on me she goes nope no nope. she goes no my 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 switch is off yeah yeah he goes interesting or something he goes, like my, she goes no nope, my light switch is off he goes okay <laughs> yeah get out <laughs> but he was dead on so fast about things sometimes it was funny because people would get in and before he even asked them what they thought about psychics, he just started going, who is John? You know, and they're like, huh? He's, he's in here with you. A fatherly figure. They're like, uh, that is my dad. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty good with his name. He's pretty spot on with a lot of names. But I mean, some names, uh, not John was just being so generic, but I mean, he was saying people's names that, I mean, names that you wouldn't even think like of. Debbie off the top or something like that. Um, even weirder than that, like Guinea or something like that. Something like Guinea. Who's Guinea? That's racist, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a racist term? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, it was just guinea behind you. <laughs> it was just guinea. <laughs> what is it? It's Italian. Oh. Is it really? I thought Italians were, were wops. I thought that's what they were guineas. Oh, guineas too? That's new to me. I guess that's what you learn watching, you learn at Sopranos? Probably. I do love Sopranos. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't, I didn't know that. That's hilarious. No. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, he was spot on with people's names like that. And then he was, uh, yeah, I mean, he just knew things right off the bat. Yeah. Just, and then he would talk about another person that would be with them, you know, and start telling them their names. And right, yeah, I was blown away by it. I was like, man, this. So I've watched other psychic shows like The Long Island Medium. Oh, um, right, right. What was it the Hollywood Medium? The Hollywood Medium. That that kid, he's pretty good. Didn't see that. Um, that I can't remember. It's on the E channel, but he's pretty good. He's spot on too. But this guy, I think, blows all of them out of the water with with how quick he is with everything, and uh, how accurate it all is so fast. 
Yeah, and then so he does most most of the time it's medium stuff, but then he does do some psychic where he says, "Hey, I think you're gonna get a promotion soon or something like that." Oh yes. And then they did they do like I guess you know obviously they their faces are not blurred, so they had to get their permission to use them on the show. They did a follow up and they said, "I'll be damned." The next day I got a bonus. Or one lady goes, "I was on a game show not too long after, and I won fifty thousand on the game show." Right, and he had told her that you're gonna come across some type of winnings within a week. He's a he said, by next week, he's like, actually, within this week, you're going to come across some type of a winnings or some type of money winnings or whatever. And she said the very next day, she ended up being on a, t on a game show. Yeah, yeah, with 50000 And then what was funny, too, some of the things that were funny was um, as he was doing a reading with somebody, the f very first thing he mentions to them was like, oh, so you met Betty White. Oh, yeah, Betty White. And she's like, what? How did you know? And she starts mentioning how... Her father, DC's father, Spirit, is talking to him, telling him that he was able to see that and was so happy for it. She goes, she was like, yeah, he would have loved that, you know? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. What I liked was um, a gentleman walked in, and he was a preacher, I believe. Oh, yeah, he was a pastor and of the he church. He was a pastor, and he, and so he Thomas didn't John, like, he didn't like psychics. He wait, well, what he said was, I don't, I don't really believe because I haven't, I've heard, I've, people tell me they are, and they tell me things, and it just They're doesn't generic. relate. So, you know, Thomas John says, uh, he says things like, yeah, there's a, there's a woman and, you know, there, she's got something going on, you know, here. So whether it was uh, <coughs> respiratory or respiratory or breast, something with cancer. Breast. And the guy did the same thing. He was just in the back. And Thomas John was just saying, she's saying that you're doing a good job with, with the twins, with the twins and the girls. And he just started, you know, he starts crying. And then he later, said, that's enough. Stop it. Yeah, he, he's so, like, stop it. <laughs> so he gets out and, and they interview him afterwards. He goes, yeah, my, my wife passed away years ago from breast cancer. And we've got girls, three girls and two of which are twins. Yeah. yeah. So he goes, I'm, I'm glad to know that she thinks I'm doing a good job raising him. So, so he's a believer, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's he was he's like, now a believer. Yeah. He was, he was like something I, when they, when he asked him, I was like, he's like, yeah, it's something I wouldn't look for. He's all, I've had them come to me and they've all been generic and cookie cutter and nothing right. resonates. Yeah. Now we have friends that are mediums. We obviously believe in mediums. What do you think about psychics? About like premonition type seeing the future? Yeah. Um, that is hard to, unless it's something that a spirit is saying that they're going to somehow manipulate and telling him that I'm going to do something. Because I know that... Spirits do do things to help push you in certain paths to make things happen. So your spirit right. guides, other spirits kind of seem to help guide and do things to create things to manifest or whatever. So if they're already in the works of doing something and they tell him, hey, yeah, I'm going to try to make, I'm going to make this happen for them. Okay. Then maybe he can say, okay, well, I see that this is going to happen for you because the spirit's going to try to manipulate something to, to make that happen. I could see that. But actually predicting the future based off of, I, I don't see that being, um, I don't know, that's kind of hard for me. That one's a real hard one yeah, for me. Yeah, me too. And I'm asking you because I'm trying to gauge it myself. Do I believe it's possible? I believe anything's really possible. So yeah, I think it's possible. Because a lot of premonitions are 50-50, right? It's either it's going to happen or it's not. So when people yeah. make a prediction, it's a 50-50 chance. Right. And so that is is hard for when a psychic is saying that I can see the future not type really. of thing. You see, 50, 50, not really. I can say there's going to be a, you know, we're, we're Well, I mean, I'm just giving a generic. Yeah, you know, I can say there's going to be a tornado tomorrow. That's actually more like a 2% likely chance. Well, still, it's a, it, but, it's a is, is it or not? It, it gives right. you two answers. Um, but then just to kind of give you a gauge, though, you know, that I can say there's going to be a tornado tomorrow. That's like a, like maybe less than 1%. If it doesn't chance. happen, but if there's a funnel cloud... That would be interesting, right? Yeah. <laughs> that would be like, ooh. Well, you know, because I've, I've, uh, I told my story about Fashion Place Mall, the shooting, right? So that, yeah, that was a, that was a vision. That was a premonition type. It was a, like a feeling. The other day, I had another one. Okay. Um, and I was telling my wife about this last night. So I was driving, I live in Salt Lake County. I was driving to Utah County. And you don't see this very often, but I don't know if you remember, at the point of the mountain, you'd see hang gliders. Right. Haven't seen them in a while. Like, you used to see tons on the weekend, remember that? Yeah. Well, I'm coming up, it was early in the morning the other day, and I see, I see one on the north side of the mountain. 
Mm-hmm. And then on the south side, I see like a, what do they call them? I don't even know what to call them. Hang gliding parachute? I don't know what you call them. Paraglide. Yeah. You know, the, the, yeah. That yeah. part. And I see one on the other side. I'm like, wow, I don't see these very often. I also haven't heard of any accidents lately. I kind of feel like there's going to be an accident now. <coughs> sure as shit, that day someone died. Really? Yeah. Right there at the point of the mountain? At the point of the mountain. Oh, weird. Maybe one of the people I saw, I don't know. There's only three people that, when I drove by, I saw three people hmm. on it. Um, and then when, on my way back, I didn't remember, I don't remember seeing anybody on my way back. But see, but, that's not more, uh, this is more of like a self-induced, see the future type of situation we're talking about. Right. So that's but, something different. It's different. I don't know what you'd call it. That's, that's like a premonition. Yeah. Um, I guess what you would say of the other version that we're talking about would be fortune fortune telling or, or telling yeah, the future and I'm, I'm trying to grasp it all i guess maybe maybe and maybe, maybe i shouldn't I'm, I'm, i guess i'm putting everything in one bottle maybe i shouldn't yeah because there's that's probably yeah, different doing. there's yeah, yeah there's different there's varieties of things very same with medium there's a there's a wide range of right uh, billers between mediums all the different clairs there's clairvoyant clair audio clair 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 but um but yeah so some psychics only have some abilities some have others some have all it's just a matter of like that one kid he has to start drawing things in order to start communicating with spirits um this guy he just has to drive <laughs> yeah it was funny because they did outtake he goes oh my gosh i thought that was a dead guy standing over there and the way he's moving he, i think he's alive <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so not only this guy is able to channel spirits um the loved ones that have crossed over that are hanging out with them that want to talk to them yeah. But he also sees spirits that have that haven't crossed over that are just dead hanging out while, like amongst us, like how Brandy sees right. him. So he sees both at the same time. Yeah, it's, that's got to be overwhelming because that's got to be a lot. Yeah. And um, then trying to realize yeah, who's I'm, alive and who's not. <laughs> you know, for me, like the whole psychic ability of saying that like, you're going to run into a fortune in the near future. You know, it's hard for me to like to put a lot of belief. For me, anyway, it's hard to put a, a lot of belief into it. I like what you're saying, though. Maybe if a spirit's telling, "Hey, I'm guiding this person in this direction," then you say, "Oh, yeah, I can kind of see what's happening with you because I'm told something." You know, yeah. See, that's kind of what I'm kind of gauging. What do you call my abilities? I don't know. I don't, I don't know the names of these things. I think maybe I'm a genie. You could be a genie or a gypsy. You have the hair. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I could grow the goatee if I wanted. You might be a genie. <laughs> <laughs> that might be your special powers. <laughs> I am feeling yellow. Was it jaundice again? <laughs> no, it's gold. Your skin's turning to gold. <laughs> oh, you may be. <laughs> but that was uh, a fun show. Well, no, we still have a scary story. Yeah, I'm just saying that was a fun show. That was See fun. See oh, oh, that show. Yeah. I thought you were talking about our show. I was like, we're not done yet. <laughs> no, Seatbelt Psychic. Yes, nice show. I like that yeah, show. He introduced it to me. Uh, it was only eight episodes. Was that it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, only it was eight, eight short. episodes. They were really short. Like 30 minutes. It was minute one season. It's on Amazon Prime right now. And it looks like it was aired on Lifetime. And I highly recommend it because that shit blew me away. I was, yeah. I was really amazed by this dude. I saw that I episodes. ended up stalking him on Instagram and followed him. It goes by really fast because on Prime there's no there's no commercials. So right, like, no commercials, just so, right to it. So it, the, each episode was, like, I guess, maybe maybe 20 minutes then, each episode. So we watched three in an hour. You had to watch them, but I watched it. And I, I liked it. That's why I binged the whole season in one sitting. Yeah, it was good. It was good. It was good. It was good. Yeah. So anyways, here's a story that uh, our friend Miguel... El Mickey Toro yes. sent us from uh, his his boss's friend. So this was in Lehigh. Lehigh is, he, is he not afraid to like say who he is? Because I know for what he does for a living. I won't say what he does for a living. Okay, all right. And I'm only saying first names. For now. But thanks for listening, man. I know he listens all the time, and uh, we appreciate you. Yeah, man. he's a big fan. We get, guess what we got for you, buddy? We got a magnet for you. One of these. Buko Buko Boys. Boys podcast magnet. So, anyways, let's tell the story. This is uh, Lehigh, Utah. This is my first time hearing it, so I hope you read it well. I'm just going <coughs> to sit back Let and me, uh, uh, enjoy. Get my reading voice. <coughs> is that a long story? I wouldn't say it's that long. Okay. It, just, it just seems long. No, it's, it's fine. I, I'm, I'm totally down with long story. I love, you, know, you know me, I love a good ghost story. <laughs> All right. So, so I'm going to sit go. back. It's my first time hearing it. About six months ago, I was at the Lehigh Art Center. I was dropping something off in the main office during the day. 
I didn't turn on any lights because it was bright outside and the light switch in the theater is super inconvenient to get to. You walk through the theater area to get to the office. The stage was dark and I just walked by and dropped the item in the office and turned around to leave. That's when I saw someone standing on the stage in the dark, but they were lit up. I thought it was the arts council director, so I audibly said, oh, hi, Jean, and then it was gone. I wondered why she would be there during the day anyway, but didn't think much of it because it could have just been my eyes playing tricks on me. Fast forward to about two months ago, I again went to the Lehigh Art Center to drop something off and pick something up during the day. I unlocked the building and went inside. It was dark again and I just went straight through to the office to drop something off. I turned on the light in the office and looked for the item I needed to grab. I got it, turned off the light, pulled the door shut and made sure it was locked. That's when I turned around. There was a woman standing face to face with me. She looked right at me and smiled. It knocked me backwards into the wall and door. I blinked my eyes and she was gone. My heart rate skyrocketed. Damn. I was shaking. I ran the hell out of there and called Noah. Noah, I guess, is a family member. Of it. it freaked me out and I don't get scared easily. I was shaking for a good 15 minutes. I told Jean about it. There, there have been other sightings. She, she asked me what she looked like. I told her, older woman with white kind of pioneer hair in a bun. Very pretty and she seemed kind. Jean asked if it could have been Hester Rippey. I knew Hester Rippey as in Rippey Literacy Center. So that's a building there close okay. by. When I ran for Miss Lehigh 20 years ago, she was starting the Literacy Center. Literacy was my platform and I was a tutor at the Literacy Center. I knew Hester well. She was an amazing person. Guess where the Literacy Center was 20 years ago? In the Mother Effin Art Center. Interesting. I think I've heard of that. Your thing was muted. There you go. <laughs> I think I've, I think I've heard of that. In Lehigh? Yeah. Yeah. About this the... about this girl. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. About Hester Rippey? Not, I don't. The name is not familiar, but that kind of about this young girl that was. Yeah, can't remember hearing about it. What young girl? This yeah, the history. I don't know the name. I just didn't. I didn't know the name, but oh, she's not a young girl. This Hester Rippey is an old lady. Oh, you, she was okay. I mean, There's I, no little girls in the okay. story. <laughs> another, when I heard the pageant, I, I started thinking of another story. Twenty heard, years ago. Yeah. And I was correlating to that because I know of a story about that. I don't know the whole details. But so he ended up, I was along running. with the story he sent me, the same person sent a picture of this lady, Hester Rippey. Um, so he sent me a picture of what she looked like. And I could see her looking, I guess, I guess she came back, she was showing herself as being a, a younger person. Okay. But yeah, so let's see, here's, here's Hester Rippey right there. Okay. But yeah, so I guess she's still there hanging out in the uh, in the art center. Interesting. That's pretty awesome. I I didn't know that. I want to go check that out now. I think I'm, we should go down there with our equipment. I think it'll be interesting. So the the same person also sent him this picture. It's uh it's the same person that that said the story. It's in her own house though, but there's this picture of her kids and and kids friend, and there's like a they, they think it's this old of. Uh, old lady's face looking back at them mm -hmm. but looking and examining that picture i i was able to debunk that right away because it looks like there's white hair on top of the head right but the girl's back of her the back of her head you could see that's a headband wrapping around the back of her head going on her forehead so that look what looks like white hair is oh. actually a headband yeah. and that face is straight on with that girl's yeah. face so it's not an old lady, it's a little outfit. girl's face. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, well, debunked real quick. Good one, good <laughs> but the story is a good story. Yeah. I totally believe that story. That's scary. That's for sure, for sure. And he blinks and she's gone. Yep, because that's happened to me. I've When I saw her grandfather, yeah. I blinked and he was gone. Like, that fast. Wow. But, yeah, wow, I've like more one. stories, guys. That was a good story, Miguel. Yeah, so again, if you guys got some good stories for us, <laughs> Buko Boys Podcast at gmail.com. That's where you can send it to us, or you can again find us on social media, Buko Boys on social media. Send us a DM. We would love to hear some more.
Yeah, we do. We love stories, folks. Yeah, thanks for sharing, man. I miss riding motorcycles with you, too. So we'll call that a show. Yeah, good way to end. Oh, uh, thanks to um, Brian and Heather Carr for a good uh, donut day. Yeah, that's National right. National Donut you guys Day. Saw post last Friday, National Donut Day. We were at, they invited us to our house. From the, They hosted again the Utah Doe Show. Uh, they were on my podcast, the DVO Show. They invited us over to their house. They went to like 20 different bakeries yeah. to get donuts from everywhere and then just handed us a knife and said, go to town. And we just sampled from yeah, all over. It. And they had it in sectioned off in different areas of what was where. Yeah. They had a little a key map to right. what was where. So you know which ones are I know tasting. a lot of people were jealous when they saw that picture. Yep. It was a good time. Tons of people were jealous. <laughs> but uh, I found a new bakery I got to go check out because of that. Lehigh Bakery or Lehigh Donuts, whatever they're called yeah. in Lehigh. That was amazing stuff. And yeah, speaking of Lehigh, with oh yeah, Miguel's Lehigh story. story. Everything comes full circle with always, the Bugo Boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then uh, been setting up the studio audience over here. Yeah, we got two studio audience members now. Yeah, you're two fish. <laughs> yeah, got the the names uh, Pennywise the clownfish. Oh, and then, good one, good one. And then Twisty the clown goby. Okay. <laughs> got a couple clowns in there right now, so they're laughing constantly at our jokes. <laughs> Just like you guys are. Yep. Hell yeah, you better be. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks again for, for watching and listening to the episode. Sorry for Google delaying Google. for that week. But you apologize. We do what we want. All right. Yeah, that's right, guys. We'll decide when we put them out. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next time. Bye. Peace.